There are a number of Chinese manufacturers making budget lenses for largely for mirrorless cameras. It's a pretty popular thing these days. But there's one that, as I study these, seems to be kind of standing above the crowd, so to speak. And that's TT Artisan. Um, I recently bought one of their lenses. This is the 35 millimeter F1.4, and I bought it in micro four thirds amount, which is what my camera uses. Um, really beautifully made lens. TT Artisan has some designs that are not only for mirrorless cameras, they've got lenses for full frame cameras, they've got lenses for M Leicas, and even one screw mount Leica lens, which is kind of cool to me because I like screw mount cameras, Leicas. And the, um, this lens is made for the APS-C size sensor, so it won't cover full frame, and it's available in all the popular mirrorless mounts for APS-C and for micro four thirds. Really beautifully made lens. This, um, I bought on Amazon for like $83, and it came with a um, UV filter, if you like to use a you know, filter on your camera. It also came with a really nice lens hood. It's a vented hood and lens hood like a rangefinder would use. Obviously, this is not going on a rangefinder camera. But still, a really nice lens hood. It's got a screw-on metal cap. Now, some people kind of decry the use of a screw-on cap because it's kind of slow to take on, take off. But the thing is, I don't tend to use a lens hood or lens cap when I'm running around with a camera. I'll put a hood on it to protect it and to keep stray light out of the front. And um, then I'll, I'll um, you know, just leave that open like that with the lens hood on it while I'm out shooting. And then I'll, you know, when I'm done using it, I'll obviously I'll put a lens cap on it. So this lens is really beautifully made, um, kind of a unique design. You notice it has actually the lens formula printed on the lens barrel. So it's a pretty wide focusing ring, uh, which is pretty easy to differentiate from the aperture ring. Um, so it's certainly a different feel. And it's just buttery smooth action on this. This really reminds me of the kind of feel that I would get from, say, Leica lenses or the 60s, 70s Pentax and Nikon lenses, just really smooth. The aperture ring does have clicks, but they're really, really minimal. They're, they're, you can feel the clicks, you can stop on a click if you're wanting to, like when shooting stills. Uh, but if you're shooting video and you need to just, you know, have a gradual transition, you, you can roll right past them without any hesitation or stop. So I think this is a really great compromise between having clicks, which a still photographer likes, and not having clicks, which a videographer might like. So I, I think it's a really good um, choice there. Really, like I say, beautifully made lens. You know, it's got the depth of field scale on it, your distance in meters. Um, it's a F1, 30 by five millimeter F1.4. So it's a pretty fast lens, stops down to F16. Now it has half stops between 1.4 and F4. So you can see those are pretty widely spaced. And then as you get to these, they're full stops. And actually it jumps from eight to 16. And if you want to get 11, you kind of got to line up with that dot in the middle. And there's not a click there, but you can, you can kind of line up with it if you need F11. So, and typically with micro four thirds, we're not going to use those really small apertures much. F8 is about as far as I'll stop down. After that, diffraction limiting starts to affect image quality in most lenses. So I just, those smaller apertures I rarely would use. Anyway, beautifully made lens. Um, on micro four thirds, this is going to be a 70 millimeter equivalent because it's 35 millimeter. On APS-C, it's I think around 50 millimeter. Um, it is a manual focus lens. There's no autofocus on this, so if you know if you're using this, it's going to be like using a vintage lens or something like that. Um, the filter size is 39 millimeter. Like I say, it comes with a filter. Some may find that of a, a bit of an odd filter size, but I believe, if I recall from my M Leica days, that was 39 millimeters, what M, a lot of M Leica lenses used. So it shouldn't be too hard to get filters for it. This focus is down to 0.28 of a, of a meter, rather. I wish it was 0.28 of a millimeter. 28 of a meter, which is about 11 inches. And um, so it focuses pretty close, which is something I'm kind of interested in, being able to use this at wide apertures up close to get some really nice soft backgrounds. 70 millimeter equivalent on a micro four thirds is kind of a good focal length. You can start to do portraiture and those kind of things with. So, um, you know, it's, I think a really good, a good, you know, focal length range to have available. So this has, you can see the, the formula on here. It has seven elements in six groups. There's one cemented pair. Um, 
I don't find anything in their literature about the coating as to whether it's multi-coated or single-coated. In this day and age, I kind of find it hard to believe that anyone meant, would make a single-coated lens. It's definitely coated. I'm going to say it, to me, it looks like multi-coating, but uh, when we shoot some pictures with it here in a little bit, I'm going to try to get the sun into some of the images and, and we'll see how that does. So, it weighs about 180 grams, which is about 6.35 ounces. Um, it comes in a really nice box. You know, a lot of these budget lenses come in just really cheap boxes. This one's really nicely done. Got a picture of the deal here, got all the information. Um, comes with uh, the manual and warranty cards. And in the box, I've got just the packing in here, but the packing and a silica gel thing and, you know, the foam. Really nicely packaged. One thing I learned, I didn't know, I've been, you know, reading about TT Artisan lenses and all that stuff. And on the back of this, it says, The Thinking Artisan. So, TT Artisan, I guess, stands for The Thinking Artisan, which I didn't know that. So, now having read that, I know. But really nice packaging. Um, like I say, this one I bought on Amazon, the seller is including a um, lens hood and the filter, which is kind of nice. The lens hood especially. I think all lenses should include a lens hood and a lot of them don't and if you're listing Olympus lens hood $83 lens and they can throw in a lens hood there's no reason you can't throw in a lens hood on your much more expensive lenses so um, we're gonna take this out and give it a try it's when I thought about why I was um, gonna buy this lens um, it kind of fills a gap for me I've got I like having fast prime lenses, and I've got a 20 millimeter f1.7 Panasonic. It's the little pancake, really fast, super sharp uh, Panasonic 20 millimeter. That you know they're kind of famous for that lens, and I've got a number of 50 millimeter f1.4 you know vintage lenses. Didn't really have anything 35 that was this fast. I have a 35 f2 or f35 light Sumeron man, you know vintage lens, and I've got some zooms that cover that range, but nothing really in a fast prime i think this would really be great um if it lives up to its reputation i think it would really be great for like inside museums and stuff where you're trying to shoot up close you know at museum displays where you can't touch things but you want to get good detail and but the light is not you know very high and and um you know you need to have some speed now from what i've seen and read on this it's pretty supposed to be pretty sharp at f14 improves significantly as you stop down and by f4 it's just superbly sharp uh, we're gonna do some testing some of the pictures I've seen uh, shot at f1.4 look pretty impressive and um, so I'm anxious to see how that way we're gonna take this out I'm downtown we're gonna just roam around and shoot some pictures and um, shoot some up close shoot them shoot far away try to get the Sun Sun in some to see how it deals with flare I'm gonna use it on my um, EM5 mark II, one of my favorite cameras and with this lens hood so that's going to be a, a bit of fun and um, carrying everything around today in this uh, brevity I did a video on this it's a brevity photo backpack um, really great for uh, carrying gear around in and it's just the right size for micro four thirds I'll put a link in the description down below for that too if you're looking for a, a a camera or a photography backpack that's the right size for a micro four thirds. This is a really good one. Anyway, so we're going to go out and about, uh, take Riley, my um, dog, wherever he went. There he is with me. And uh, he's laying under the table here. And we're going to shoot some pictures. When we're done, we'll uh, talk about what those look like and see what you think. Uh, I'm really hoping this lens kind of lives up to its reputation. I think it'll be a lens I'll use a lot. I, uh, I don't mind using manual focus lenses. I, you know, I shoot vintage lenses quite a bit. And the EM5 Mark II and the EP5 that I have, both have really great focus peaking and magnifiers so I can do critical focusing. And so I'm looking forward to um, taking this out and seeing how it does. So we're gonna go out and about, shoot some pictures, and then uh, we'll come back and talk about those.
O'Reilly and I had some fun going out, taking some pictures. Um, you know, looking at these pictures, and I'm just looking at the camera so far, but the things that I can tell is at F1.4, yes, it, it's sharp enough. I mean, it's, again, it's a lot like a vintage lens in that it's got some sharpness there at F1.4, but there's some softness too, which is kind of cool when you're wanting to have that effect. Uh, stop it down though, it's very, very sharp. I really like the lens. I tried to intentionally get some the sun in some of the images, and what I kind of discovered is if you have the sun right in the image, it doesn't do too bad. I mean, you do lose some contrast. Obviously, you're going to with just about any lens, but at least a little. But it did it really pretty well. It, it handled it. But when you get the sun slightly out of the image where the sun is shining across the front, you can definitely get some interesting uh, a flare effects. So if you like using flare effects for video maybe or you know even for still photography you can do it with this lens so again this lens you know and the, the design of this if you look at this this design it's what they call a double gauss design um and it, it's a, a kind of a vintage design and it's not a um i mean even some new lenses use some of those reuse some of those vintage designs with better coatings and different glass elements and now they use um a spheric elements and and some things that you know weren't really used that commonly you know back in the 60s and 70s so they've improved a lot of lens designs but um you know tt artists are making some lenses that have some really great character in the images they don't have that clinical look that a lot of new digital lenses you know have and you know they're very affordable and um just a lot of fun to use. So I really enjoyed using this. And I have to say, having spent a little bit of time using it, I had no trouble differentiating between focus and aperture ring when I was using it. I heard a couple people online say, well, they're very similar. You can't, you know, you can mix one up for the other. I never had that problem. I mean, to me, they feel somewhat different. I mean, the, the focus ring is not only larger, it's the, the ribbing on it is um, or the knurling is coarser than the aperture ring which and the aperture ring is much narrower the knurled part and so i had no trouble telling them apart when i was using the lens i've had that problem with some lenses where they're close enough together and they feel very similar and if you're not looking at it if you're just you know trying to use you know do it by feel you can get them mixed up but didn't have any problem with that um like I say, I've just looked at the images in the camera. I haven't really downloaded them, but I can tell from, you know, just zooming in on them that it uh, looks like there's some good sharpness. They really, I like the imagery. Um, I think pretty reliably, when I put these in a computer and blow them up, I'm going to be real happy with them. So, if uh, you're looking for something in the 35 millimeter focal length, F1.4, um, I could highly recommend this lens. I'm really going to be using this thing quite a bit. Um, you open it wide open, you get some really nice, soft backgrounds. Um, the, the bokeh, if you want to use that, I think is very pleasant. Um, back in my film photography days, that word didn't exist. And we just talked about soft, creamy backgrounds that were, that were not distracting. We didn't want the background to distract from the foreground, the subject. We wanted to separate the subject from the background by softening the background, but we didn't want to make the background distracting or add character to the background that caused you to look at the background instead of the subject. I know that's a thing now, but uh, for me, I would rather just have a background that's nice and soft and, and you know, just nicely blurred and doesn't distract from the subject. I want the subject to pop out, you know, using that separation. So, I don't know, I really enjoyed using this. I think it's going to be a real keeper. Uh, I'm really glad I bought it. A TD art, TT Artisan, um, I think does an excellent job. Certainly they have with this lens, and I'm going to be probably looking at buying some of their other lenses. Um, I'm shooting, and you saw in the last video, I'm shooting some rangefinder film cameras, and uh, they do have all minor Canon screw mount. Uh, I don't have any M mount Leicas. I'd love to have an M mount Leica again, but maybe someday. Um, but the... Um, they do make a 28 f56 uh, wide angle i think it's a copy of an of an early lights or leica lens and um so i may have to look at getting one of those to get a you know 28 they've also got some uh, accessory viewfinders that are pretty affordable too if you need an accessory viewfinder you might want to look at tt artisan anyway um i'm really pleased with these like i say i've had some other budget lenses from some other companies and um, I can't say they were bad necessarily, but I think this is like 
a notch above. I mean, this this if I bought this lens and it said, say, Voigtlander or uh, I'm not going to go so, maybe quite so far as Leica, but if it if it had any of the Japanese major names on it or Voigtlander, which is actually made by Cosina these days, um, but if it had one of those names on it, this is the quality I would expect. I mean, it really it just focuses so smooth and beautifully and just a joy to use. The lens hood was a nice inclusion, so the seller on uh, Amazon was nice that they included that because I would have had to order one otherwise. Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed seeing some of those pictures and learning about the lens. If you have any thoughts or comments, I always love to hear from you. Please don't hesitate to leave me a comment. And as always, thanks for watching.